The question I get asked quite a bit is what Bible version do I use when I'm quoting scripture on my videos? And I got a couple answers for that. I'm going to say that I actually use two different versions regularly. And there are definitely good reasons why I use these two versions of the Bible. I'm going to start off by saying that when you hear me quote scripture on film, most of the time I'm using the New King James Version. I use the New King James Version primarily because I don't speak Old English. And it's really the best translation for my language, my version of the English language. I also use the King James Version because I believe, because of what I'm about to share with you, that it is the ultimate authority in what the translation into the English language is. I'm going to start off by sharing a story. I used to spend a lot of time working in New York City, and I had several friends there, really great friends. One day I was eating lunch with seven different people, and I happened to be the only Christian in the room, more so everybody else was an atheist. Now these are people that I greatly love and the question came up, why do you believe in God? And I really paused for a second because these were important people in my life and I really wanted to share the truth of why I believe in God. And what I shared with them went something like this. How could you not believe in a God who time after time after time again has said through prophecy that certain kings will rise up and kings will fall? And battles will take place at certain places, and here's who the victor will be. Sometimes God names kings by name thousands of years before they're even born. And 100% of the time, they play out exactly like God says they'll play out. So how can you deny a God like that? Now later on, I kind of thought, thought a lot about that conversation, and as I thought about it, I came to the conclusion that I wish I would have given them a better answer. I wish I would have had some examples. And I remember when I was studying Daniel earlier in my life, I came across Daniel 11, and that entire chapter made no sense to me because it talks about the warrings of the kings of the north and the kings of the south. And I realized that that prophecy had transpired through the Ptolemaic and the Seleucid Empire, which were two parts of what was formerly known as the Grecian Empire. Now, all these battles that Daniel talks about, and these events between the kings of the north and the south, all these events were written down by Daniel over 300 years before the Grecian Empire even came about. The way I went about studying it was I would take verse by verse through Daniel 11, and I would align it up with exactly how it played out in Grecian history. And as I'm doing that with the New King James Version, verse by verse went along exactly verbatim with how it played out in Grecian history. Until I got to verse 9, where it says, Then the king of the north shall come to the kingdom of the king of the south, but shall return to his own land. As I compared that to the Ptolemaic and the Seleucid Empire, that never happened in history. So that didn't make sense to me. I was suddenly stumped. And I went and I talked to a pastor about it, and he pointed out that his Bible actually says the king of the south. So then I broke out my King James Version, and the way it reads... So the king of the south shall come into his kingdom and shall return into his own land. Now these are two very different versions of an event between two kings. Significant events that ultimately lead in the story in chapter 11 to the Antichrist. These are very important events that cannot be misread. Again, in the New King James Version, Then the king of the north shall come to the kingdom of the king of the south, but shall return to his own land. And the King James Version says, So the king of the south shall come into his kingdom and shall return into his own land. North and South are two very different things, as you know. And it was really the first time that I recognized there is definitely a difference in these versions. That's a significant difference. The difference between up and down is very significant. More so, I also noticed as I was reading in Acts, it's in an Acts 2-4 on the day of Pentecost, it says in the King James Version, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And I notice right there that the King James Version uses two different terms. It talks about a Holy Ghost and it also talks about a Holy Spirit. And the King James Version is the only version of the English Bible that does that. All the other ones just refer to it as the Holy Spirit. And there's definitely a difference. When the Holy Spirit dwells in the earth, and it does things throughout the earth and throughout the universe. 
is referred to as the Holy Spirit. However, when it indwells inside of us, it is then referred to as the Holy Ghost. And the King James Version is really the only version that refers to it as that. So this is kind of why I use these two versions. Now again, I believe that whatever version you're using is a great version, definitely use it. But I also recommend whatever you do, have a King James Version just sitting on a shelf somewhere. That way, if you kind of have a question or you're wondering what does it actually say, take a look at the King James Version. So I hope this video helps. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. You can also now find us at GodFamilyAndGuns.org and GodFamilyAndGuns at Facebook. But by far, the most important part of this YouTube channel is we take prayer requests. And we put that at the end of every video because God has asked us to. And we're going to be obedient to that. So never hesitate to send that stuff in. Thank you for watching this episode of God, Family, and Guns. And as always, love God, love your family, and love guns.